Peter Drucker is a very famous management leadership expert. He's written dozens of books. He has a metaphor that I really like that's proven very helpful to me. And he says that every year or so, a leader needs to metaphorically climb the tree near where his people are and look toward the promised land and ask God, what is the next hill that we need to climb? And so every year, at least, I try to climb the tree, in a sense, and look toward the future. And I like to see where the rivers are, where we can find a peaceful place to be, the restoration of our souls as an organization, and for my own life and my family. I like to look and see where the wolves are so I can stay away from that pack of wolves. I like to look and see where the wells are so that I know where there's living water. And I like to see what that next hill that I have to climb is in order to get to where I believe God is leading us, our promised land. And then I like to ask other key leaders to climb the tree and see if they see what I see, or if I'm out on a limb, missing it all. And then, we like to interact and see if we can agree on whether we have insight into God's purposes for what's next. My wife and I do this. We do this with our children once a year. We talk about where God's leading us. Because without vision, without insight into what God's purposes are for the future, we'll perish. Now in a church, there are two different kinds of vision, if you will. One is the core vision. This is like the mountain range. The general direction that we're headed. This is the purpose of the organization. Why we exist. For instance, our organization exists to multiply healthy churches among all people and to glorify God by doing this. We have a clear, concrete vision. We have a clear core vision statement. That's our mountain range. That's where we're headed. We have core values to guide us along the way. We have some strategies that we've agreed on. We have some measurements to see if we're going on the right path and we're accountable to those. But vision is looking for what that next hill is to climb, that's specific, that's concrete, that's in the direction of the core vision, but it's a concrete vision of what's next. And this is one of the most important functions of anyone who's leading other people, is to see what that next hill is to climb. Now sometimes, people aren't too good at climbing trees by themselves, they don't like to do that, some leaders aren't that way and so what they'll do is they'll get a big tree that has a big branch and they'll get all the leaders up there onto this branch and they'll have a picnic lunch up there and they'll spend time and they'll look together and they'll try to see together where it is that God's leading and that's fine too it depends a lot on the style of the leader and so vision is insight into God's purposes. And I believe that God wants to give that to the person who's leading others. But God also wants to confirm that vision through the other plurality of leaders that we have, whether it's going up in the tree together or sending people up one by one in the tree. We have to come to agreement together on where God's leading us, what the next hill to climb is. I can't head a direction without my wife's agreement. 
We can't do something as a family unless we agree. And so it's not just the leader imposing the vision on everybody else, but it's seeking to come to understand together insight into where God is leading us. Because God wants to lead us in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So vision is insight into God's purposes, and it's clarified to the leader, and it's confirmed by a plurality of leaders. Because you see, every dream needs a team, and every team needs a leader. So we work together. And one more little comment, and that is that the design of the vision, the clarity of it, has to burn in the heart of the leader. You can't delegate vision to somebody else. You can't give it to a committee. You can't give it to a side group. You can't even have two co-leaders that are trying to lead together because people have a hard time following a group. Every dream needs a team, but every team needs a leader. And the leader has to have insight into the vision. They have to have passion for the vision. They have to really be willing to pay the price to lead that direction. But we do it with others, not just as a dictator, not just thinking we know God's will without input from anybody else. No, we design it, the, we, we, we collaborate on it together. And then there's a, another aspect to this that especially in a church and in a larger organization, as we move together by, as a team, there needs to be what's called alignment and attunement. Alignment is like the gears of a car moving together. Attunement is like a symphony orchestra where the instruments are tuned to each other. Both are needed in a church. There needs to be alignment to the vision, to the strategy that we've agreed to, but we also have to be involved in what the shape of, of every person in the group is. Because we have to move to the promised land together. It takes alignment to the strategy. The gears have to work together. But we also have to be a symphony orchestra where we hear the other instruments. We hear the other people. We're interacting together. It's not just mechanical leadership and vision. It's also emotional bringing everybody together, bringing everybody on board, bringing everybody with their gifts, and moving together to the promised land. And so insight is, vision is insight into God's purposes. And the leader has to burn with this vision and has to be shared by all the leaders. And there needs to be alignment with everyone, and there has to be attunement of all the instruments in the orchestra, everybody involved going the same direction. And then finally, one of the challenges of vision is the implementation of the vision. There are some people who talk a lot about vision. They have, they have an idea of where they want to go, but they really don't know how to implement the vision. And so they just spin ideas and there's never any movement toward the promised land and people get frustrated and they call this person yeah a visionary but what they mean by that is oftentimes that they have ideas but they don't know how to implement them and in the bible there's a hint i believe that there are two different gifts that are very very critical to implementing vision one is this gift of leadership, which means to stand before. There's also the gift in 1 Corinthians that talks about the gift of administrations, which means to have your hands on things. And even the word lead in the Latin comes from a word that means to go. And of all the men in the Old Testament, I think of Moses, that he was a leader. He was on the go. He was leading God's people to the promised land. He was a great leader of God's people. He was on the go. But in the Old Testament, probably the preeminent administrator or manager is Joseph. 
And the Latin word for administration or management is to have your hands on things. It comes from a word meaning hand. And it points to the importance in an organization that, yes, we need leaders who can cast vision, but we also need people that have their hands on the details, have their hands on the implementation, who put things together. Because often leaders are passionate about effectiveness, doing the right things, but somebody has to be passionate about e efficiency, doing things right. So Joseph is an example of a great administrator, managing under Pharaoh the leader, a great kingdom. And Moses is a great example of a leader who was taking God's people to the promised land. One of my favorite examples of how this works in the church is the story of a Methodist pastor in Philadelphia in America. He used to say, I'm an idea man. I get an inspiration and then I would try to turn it into ministry, but lately my ideas aren't being implemented. I'm not able to get the progress I used to have. And as he reflected on it, he thought about the fact that the person who had been at his side for many years had just died, and this man had been a union organizer. And this idea guy didn't realize that this union organizer was always by the side of this leader. And when the leader would talk about with great passion and idea of what he saw God wanted for the church, this union organizer, this person who was so good at administration and managing things, he would find the right people, he would put together a plan, he would put the pieces in place, he would implement the vision. And finally the pastor realized that once that man died, he said, you know, as I look back over the last year, Without that man by my side, we haven't gotten a thing done. Because vision is critical, but implementation is just as important. And every leader needs to do some managing, and every manager needs to do some leading, but I do believe that these can be complementary gifts. We see this even in the life of Joseph, that Pharaoh had the dream Pharaoh had the idea of what God was going to do in the future, and he shared it with Joseph, and Joseph interpreted it, and then put together a strategy as to how to deal with the coming famine and the, and the coming feast. And then he organized it all, and he ran it all under Pharaoh. And this is a great picture of vision and vision implementation. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.